Mmm, freezing rain. My favorite. That's what I woke up to this morning. Glad I got this tarp on there. Kind of cool looking, but not fun to be out. And so glad I've got this tarp out here. I mean, just look at it dripping off my tire. One thing I'm going to go ahead and do, I'm going to fill in these two holes with some weld, basically just plug weld it. I've got this piece of copper in here to use it as like a welding spoon. The weld won't stick to that, well, at least not a whole lot, unless I overheat it too much. But even then it won't be a, like a permanent bond, I'll be able to rip it away no problem. It'll save me grinding on the back side and uh, make it a lot flatter for when I go ahead and re-drill the new holes up higher to match up with the holes on the body. Well, here's the resulting plugs from uh, welding that up. If it'll stay focused. And it looks like it doesn't want to focus in when I'm real close. And the back sides, as you can see, as you can try to see, they're pretty close to darn, they're pretty darn close to perfectly flat. That'll be good, the back side shouldn't need some dressing, a little bit of grinding on the front, and they'll be good to go. Figure I'd give you guys a view of uh, the frame after it's been painted. You can see down there where it's nice and black. Sorry it's out of focus, it's just not cooperating right now. Uh, the rest of it is that color, except it's all dusty from uh, the rest of the grinding. So, she's all painted. Next step is going to go ahead and oil it. Well, now I've got all my uh, rust protection done. Uh, I could use it with a little bit more oil inside the rear cross member, but I can do that later. Uh, I can just tuck my head under there and do that. That's easy enough. And I don't think I did the undersides of the frame rails. Uh, again, I can do that later without too much hassle. Uh, again, the goal is to get this done as soon as possible. I've also gone through and, uh, well, corrosion inhibited all the contact points. Basically, I've electrically and uh, moisture wise uh, isolated steel from the aluminum. See, the trouble is if you've got water in there, and especially if it's got an electrolyte like salt is really good as an electrolyte, and guess what they put down on the roads in the winter? Basically what happens is it creates a galvanic cell where the aluminum uh, wants to rust a lot or, well, corrode a lot easier than the steel, so it'll corrode, leaving the steel intact and actually protect the steel from corrosion. We don't want either to corrode, so I've got um, underneath these uh, plastic pieces, Ooh, that's stuck well, I'm happy with that, I've got butyl rubber tape in there. That's basically just butyl tape used for sealing RVs, uh, sailboats, all sorts of places. Really great stuff. Kind of, you get it warm and it mashes like putty. Got it on each and every one of them and I've got a piece of, uh, what is this stuff? Milk trick bottles, HDPE. Just a piece of that on top so that it doesn't like weld the body to the frame. Um, and because they're isolated, any moisture that gets in there should not cause any galvanic corrosion anymore. And aluminum, of course, is a lot less likely to rust on its own. Or corrode, rather. So, hopefully that'll, that'll take care of that. Plus, it won't stick the body there. So, next time I take it off, it won't be permanently adhered to the rear here. I did only use, I did only use the butyl rubber on these. Um... It's got that spacer in there, so it's not going to be stuck permanent-wise. I just didn't feel like cutting out more pieces of that. Plus, it'll give me a chance to see which one actually protects better in the long run. Frame's all oiled, as I said. Next thing is going to be go ahead and get the rear tub back on in here. And the next step's going to be getting my wife, and then uh, we'll just pop that tub right back on there. Gonna go grab her. I saw it was quite nice with the snow falling down. I wanted to get that uh, on video. Figured you'd be interested in seeing what I'm doing for my hardware. Unfortunately, the fasten all I went to was all out of the right side, right length, and bolts. So these are like a quarter inch too long. But longer I can use, shorter I can't. 
These are the same size as the short bolts that I pulled out of this. Mainly all of these in the center here. Uh, I don't know if I pulled them out anywhere else. Uh, most of the others, the end ones were longer, as were the ones in the front, because they had more stuff to go through. Using these, they're uh, zinced, uh, anti-corrosion, all that goodness. Plus, I think they're pretty with that gold. Then they were also didn't have nuts and split washers, so I just went for Nylock. They were actually pretty close to the same price, within a buck for like the pack of ten. So that makes it easier on me. What I'm doing for washers on the back, these are just plain galvanized washers, and I'm taking a little bit of the butyl tape and smear it around the outside. I'm using a heater, little hair dryer as a that little heat, hair dryer as a heat source. Smear it around there, that way when it compresses on the back side, it keeps that end uh, watertight. Might be a pain to pull off eventually, but it's not the most difficult thing. And if it stays stuck, well, I'll just reuse it as is. I am anti-seizing it with some good old nickel anti-seize. I have the pot of nickel, that's why I'm not using, you know, copper slip or anything. So, uh, yeah, hopefully it'll be able to come apart next time easily. I've got... Because of the limited space in there, I've got the wrench on the back of the nut, and hopefully this will work right. And, uh, whiz it on. These are 13 millimeter heads. Yeah, that's the way to do it. Alright, I'm going to keep buzzing these on and uh, catch you up later. Oh, one other thing. I did remove the one wood block. When I was setting everything down, I did find that wood block was... Uh, the wood block that was under those holes there. Um, I don't know if I've ever covered that on video. I need to make a video independently on that. This has uh, these holes in the body tub where something, allegedly a winch for pulling gliders in the air, uh, well, a winch to hold the cable and the truck would run down and pull a glider in the air. I want to specify that. Allegedly, that's what was in the back here. And then uh, U-bolts would go around the frame. And these wood blocks, there's one under here and one left there. This one was missing when I got the car. Would uh, keep from, you know, bending the tub down and it basically made a solid mount. Now, I say allegedly because I've got no proof for it except for the, these holes. And that's what someone uh, said that the car looked like. It had, uh, looked like one they had that, well, was used for towing gliders in there. So I'm just going to keep uh, working on zapping these uh, bolts in, and I'll come back to you whenever I get to something interesting, I guess. Well, what a way to end a day working on my car. Super snowy. Oh, God. Maybe I should breathe away from the camera. Anyways, uh, on the car... Oh, I already turned the lights off. Well, basically, I just finished putting the rest of those bolts in in the back. Still got a couple long ones to do. But I'm going to call it an evening and call it a video. So thanks for watching. Like, comment, subscribe. If you like what I'm doing, uh, feel free to check out some more of my videos. I've got a whole bunch of them up there now. I think I'm almost at 100, if not just over. Uh, and also, if you would like to help support my, uh, my work out here and the videos, I do have a Patreon account. Uh, link is down in the description. With that, thanks for watching, and I'll catch you on the next one. Just quick grabbing a thumbnail.